Hello, I'm Rebecca the Maths Lady and welcome to this video on Harder Maths with Poppets. In this video I'm going to explore all the fabulous maths you can do with children aged 8 to 12. I'll just quickly list the topics I'm going to cover and then if you're looking for one in particular you can scroll through the video and look for the big title of that topic so you can get straight to what you want. So I'm going to cover multiplication and division and that will include multiplication and division facts up to 12 by 12 and a little bit about short multiplication and short division. I'm going to explore factors and with that will come factor pairs, prime numbers, square numbers. We'll look quickly at fractions of amounts. Going to do some gorgeous work on two-dimensional shape. We'll look at coordinate grids in the first quadrant and in four quadrants. We'll talk about teaching symmetry and translations. We'll talk a little bit about teaching compound measures for speed. I'll cover the multiplication of fractions. We'll look at equivalent fractions and equivalent ratios. And I'll also cover how we teach children to have a deep understanding of what the mean is as an average. For some of these activities you'll just need one poppet square, for some of them you'll need four, but four children could share four between them and work together. Right, let's get started with multiplication and division. So the first lovely thing we can do with our tables up to 12 times 12 is just to pop them out as arrays. So if we looked at a calculation like 8 times 3, we can forget about these top two for that calculation and just pop out three rows of eight. Or we could have done that the other way round as eight rows of three so that even the children who are struggling are going to enjoy doing that and are going to be able to count up the totals. When you're showing multiplication facts as arrays, as rectangles, children can easily see the links between different results, which is really powerful. And similarly for division facts. So if you've got a division question like 36 divided by 9, all you need to do is pop out rows of 9 until you've popped 36. And your answer is the height of the rectangle. It's really powerful to work on multiplication and division facts with array because children develop such a deeply connected understanding of multiplication and division and how they relate to each other. We see the whole calculation family in this. This is 4 times 9 is 36, it's 9 times 4 is 36, it's 36 divided by 4 is 9, and it's 36 divided by 9 is 4. And if we think about a division like 36 divided by 9, we can see it as sharing fairly into 9 equal groups and see the 4, and we can also say how many nines in 36 and see that that's four. It's such a powerful way to explore tables. Now, as we move on to work on short multiplication and short division, children need to be fluent on their multiplication and division facts, and some of them aren't yet. And teachers tend to give them multiplication squares with all the results. We don't want to do that. We want to challenge them to think more deeply than that, but also give them some support if they're really struggling. So you could do that with your counting beads so they can work out the small calculation that they're working on with the counting beads and see the structure. Sometimes do it with array packs. If you're doing lots of multiplication division by six, you might want to work on that. But this is the summer of 2021. So let's do it with poppets just for fun. Why not? And then those children who are struggling can really engage with developing their understanding of their multiplication and division facts while they're working on more complex multiplication and division. Next, let's look at factors. So usually if I'm asking children to find the factors of a number, say 18, I would give them 18 blocks and ask them to build rectangles. And of course, that's still a really powerful way to teach. But you can also do it with poppets. And if they're in the mood for doing with poppets, they're going to have a lot of fun. So if we look at 18, we can build a rectangle that's 9 by 2. And we can see that 2 is a factor and 9 is a factor. And 2 and 9 are a factor pair for 18. We could also build a rectangle that's 3 by 6. And 3 and 6 are a factor pair for 18. And with three of these, we could also find the 1 by 18 rectangle. So we can see our factor pairs. We can see our square numbers that have repeated factors. And we can see our prime numbers that only make skinny rectangles that are one pop wide. Then we can do some work on fractions of amounts. And the poppets make it so clear. 
If you needed to find 2 sevenths of 35, all you need to do is pop out 35 in seven equal columns like this. And then we can see 35 in sevenths and we can see 2 sevenths and deeply understand that the answer is 10. We can easily swap to 6 sevenths. Two dimensional shape is an absolutely lovely topic with poppets. Just name a shape and ask children to pop out the corners of one. How about a kite? It might look like that. And if we join those up with straight lines, you have kite. Take some thinking about, but it's exactly the right level of challenge. You could have a competition where children only get the credit if they get a different kite to anyone else in the room. Did anyone think of doing one like that? Then you'd have to decide if this kite here and this kite here are the same or not. They're in different places, but they are exactly the same shape and size and they fit on top of each other. So they are congruent, which is a word beyond this level. So you'd have to decide whether they count as being the same kite or not. And we can do exactly the same with all the quadrilaterals. Can they make a pentagon? That's a fabulous challenge. They're going to struggle to make a regular pentagon, but it's really useful for them to discover that they're going to struggle with that. But they could make an irregular pentagon, perhaps like this. So you can have lots of fun with two dimensional shapes and we'll do a little more as we look at the other topics. And our next topic is coordinate grids. So here's our coordinate for grid in the first quadrant. We could set up our X axis and our Y axis, perhaps just pop this on a whiteboard and draw them on quickly. And of course that is the coordinate three, two and so on. And you could call out coordinates and they could pop those coordinates and you could ask them what shape they've made. And then we can work on a four coordinate grid. Once we've set up our four coordinate grid, we can use it to do wonderful work with symmetry. Can they build a shape in this quadrant that's not symmetrical? And then can they reflect it this way and this way and down to here as well? So you might end up with a pattern like this. Powerful work to do. And I would have them working in pairs or groups so that they're talking about what they're doing. And then as well as working on symmetry, we can also work on translations. What would this shape look like if we translated it by the vector 3, 1? Well, it would go 3 along and 1 up. So it would look like this. When we're working on compound measures for speed, we tend to work on meters per second or kilometers per hour. But why not poppets per second? How many pops can they do per second? Well, you want to set them a challenge of doing a lot of pops and then divide that by the number of seconds it took them to find their popping speed. And then, of course, you can set the three types of questions with compound measures where you're given the speed and the number of pops and you have to work out the time where you're given the speed and the time and you have to work out the number of pops and where you're given the number of pops and the time and you have to work out the speed. But they can actually do the questions that you're setting them to sense check their answers and develop a deep understanding of compound measure. Multiplication of fractions. So if we had a calculation like two fifths times three quarters, we'd need to set up a rectangle where we're going to be able to show quarters in one direction and fifths in another. So if we look at this rectangle, we can beautifully show the three quarters up this way and the two fifths across this way now. So if we do that, three quarters is how high we're going and two fifths is how wide we're going. So our answer is six twentieths. Let's just try another one. One fifth times five sixths. Well, we'd need a rectangle that will split into fifths in one direction and sixths the other way. We only want one fifth, so we're only going one fifth high, but we want five sixths wide. So our answer is five out of 30, five thirtieths, which will simplify to one sixth. 
I mentioned we'd do a little on equivalent fractions and equivalent ratios. If you had the fraction 2 thirds, 2 over 3, you can create equivalent fractions just by popping across another column. So 4 sixths is an equivalent fraction. And so is 6 ninths. And of course, exactly the same is true with ratio. If this had been the ratio 3 to 2, the ratio 6 to 4 would have been an equivalent ratio, and so would the ratio 9 to 6. And of course, it's wonderful to explore why all of that works, but the answers you come up with will probably depend on the way you've previously taught these topics. And if you haven't previously taught them, this is a nice introduction before you come back to teach them with a deeper understanding. And the final topic for this video is teaching the mean. Now, a lot of people just learn the mean as a method without deep understanding. So they know that you have to add all the numbers together and divide by how many numbers you've got. So if you had the numbers four, three, four, one, and three, you'd add them all together to get 15 and then divide by five, so the answer would be three. But the mean at a deeper level is just about resharing things fairly. So if you imagine these are piles of sweets, it's just about moving things around, taking those two and putting them here so that everyone's got the same number of sweets. So you can play around with simple questions about the mean on your poppets to ensure everyone develops that understanding. And of course, you can reshare things fairly by adding them all together, putting them all into a big group and then dividing them by the number of people or things they're being shared between. So that standard method does work. But sometimes if you've got this deep understanding, you can see some powerful shortcuts and you've got a much deeper and more flexible understanding of the mean. If you found this video interesting, there was an earlier video on maths with poppets, which was targeted at younger children. And there's going to be another video on SEN maths with poppets, which will go live a few days after this one. If you'd like to see more of my videos, please just click on the videos button on this channel to see a few. If any thoughts about this, please do leave a comment. And if you've time to like this video or tell your friends or colleagues about it in person or on social media, that would be completely awesome. I hope you get to really enjoy your maths teaching this summer now we've got our kids back. Take care. Bye for now.